Big welcome back. I missed you all. It's a long weekend without you. Here we are, five a day to keep COVID at bay and it's still there. What a wonderfully different week and weekend. New Zealand starting to relax. Belgium planning to relax. America starting to relax some. But the United Kingdom still adamant it's way too early. And I've noticed something really interesting and I hope this helps in a way. When we started these broadcasts together, the first emotion we were dealing with from Scripture as we tried to stand firm from the get-go was shock. And then fear, and I think fear is still there, but as we seem to have done a good job by and large in our hospitals around the world, I think fear is giving away to discouragement particularly as some of us face a longer haul than we really wanted to face. So a couple of scriptures this week are going to be about discouragement. We will keep our fear knots going, and I haven't forgotten. I've promised you a copy. You'll get it, but I've got other things to offer you this week. David's talking to Solomon. Solomon's coming out of a, an era of war, and something new is being birthed, and he's being given the responsibility for what new is being birthed, which was, in their case, the temple of the Lord. And David says, you'll have success if you're careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave to Moses for Israel. And then he says these words, and I want to say them, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to you today. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Strength, courage, fearing not, and don't be discouraged. Could I encourage you as we talk about reaching out, giving thanks, making a difference? This week, let's focus on encouraging one another. Hebrews says, encourage one another day after day while it's still called today so that no one becomes hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. There's a whole message there. Simple enough, though, let's encourage one another as long as it's still called today. And it's still called today, <laughs> even in COVID-19. Now, looking up today, as you probably remember, is National Leaders. And a bit later on, for those watching the full uh, broadcast, we'll unpack this a bit further. But let's get together and pray right now. Wherever you are, would you just focus with me as I call out in prayer for our national and international leaders here in the UK. Thank you for Boris Johnson's recovery as he comes back into harness this week. Father, protect him, bless him, inspire him, enthuse him, give him wisdom, great wisdom, along with Matt Hancock and other ministers. Canada, Prime Minister Trudeau, President Trump, with all that's going on there. Particularly, we pray for Mayor de Blasio and other state governors as different states decide different responses to lockdown could be a source of great unrest. In your mercy, bring peace. President Macron, Chancellor Merkel, Prime Minister Sanchez, Prime Minister Conte, Scott Morrison, uh, Prime Minister Ahern, and Stefan Löfven in Sweden. We commit these leaders to you. We're encouraged in Scripture, actually exhorted in Scripture, to pray for those that have authority over us. And we do with joy ask you to give them wisdom, great wisdom, Father, in your mercy. Now, I wanted to bring a perspective today. We're going to look later on in the week at some of the answers to the questions, what do you believe will be different as we come out of COVID for you? We're in the same storm, my friend Mike Fisher says, but we are not in the same boat. I have several friends who have lost loved ones from COVID, a father, a brother, and several more who have lost friends. I have other friends who think it's all been hyped, a hoax, a conspiracy, a creation of the media. I wish I could introduce them to each other. I have friends who are saying this is a wonderful time of rest and relaxation. I have others who are working 18-hour days and are absolutely exhausted. I have friends talking about using this time to learn and grow. I have others who are simply trying to emotionally survive and make it through each day. I have friends who live alone who are dying from loneliness. I have friends whose greatest desire is to get one hour out of the house, away from spouse or children who are driving them up the wall. 
Empathy demands us to stop projecting our experience onto everyone else and really listen to what they are going through. Maybe as we reach out and make a difference this week, we could do just that. Dwelling on that a little bit further, Mike says, it just makes me think, I wonder if we could be just a bit more empathetic to understand that no, we're not going through the same thing as the person next to us. We are in the same storm, but we are in different boats. Can I encourage you, think about that a bit this week. We may even read that once more this week. And as with anything, if you'd like a copy of that, just email me davido at insight-marketing.com or go to davidoliverbooks.com and use the contact page to send notes to me. But I want to ask you to pray with me today. I want to engage you in prayer, if you would. Uh, in the Salt and Light family, we have requests from Ray Bale, we have requests from Kenya, and requests from our brothers and sisters in Uganda. And I'm just going to read and then pray. I'm going to ask you to stand up if it suits you, or even if you're just sat still, would you actually engage with this prayer? Let's put our shoulders to this wheel of prayer together. Ray says, please be praying for Eastern Congo, where many of our friends, brothers and sisters are. Ebola has resurfaced, COVID-19 war and now terrible flash flooding. Matonga, one of his co-workers, has informed me that all fresh water in his area, Uvira, is gone as water supply tanks were washed away. Seven bridges are destroyed, which has virtually cut off access to the north and to the south. The only means of getting through at present is by small boat or moto. Death toll is rising by the hour. Join me as we pray for our brothers and sisters there. Father, protect our brothers and sisters. We pray for Matongo. We pray for those in the Uvira era that there would be water supply provided. We pray for protection against COVID-19 and this evil disease, Ebola. Pray for protection for children and parents and villages as houses get washed away in these floods. And Father, in the trauma of it all, would you cause your compassion, your love, your presence to surround those who name the name of Jesus, that in turn they may reach out in their own tragic and traumatic situations and make a difference to others. Those in Kenya say, please pray for us. Corona cases are rising. We have floods wiping away entire villages, submerging other places. Locusts also came and left destruction, especially now that the second generation of locusts has hatched. And folks, doesn't this give us a perspective? We think it's tough being in lockdown. We should on one level be ashamed of ourselves. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Kenya. Pray for uh, the deliverance churches that are part of our family in Umoja and Nakuru and so many other places. In your mercy, Father, watch over them. Watch over those where floods have taken possessions and even taken life. Father, would you push back this plague of locusts? Would you cause a solution that would destroy this second generation that's just hatched? And we pray for the work of the farmer's hands to be productive and fruitful. And Father, grant your church power, wisdom, resources, and appetite to reach out and make a difference in your mercy granted. And then from our brothers and sisters in Uganda, the number of those infected had been controlled with no new infections due to lockdown in Uganda, but now they're going up. The increase has come through truck drivers from neighboring countries. It's a big challenge because we're a landlocked country and supplies to us and Rwanda, Burundi, Eastern Congo and South Sudan must be allowed to flow from the seaport. Pray for wisdom for the leaders they ask to make the right decision and Father this is our day for praying for national leaders and we pray for the Prime Minister and the ministers in Uganda, Kenya and in the Congo. We pray uh, even where there's wickedness in some places we pray for wisdom, godly wisdom to surface, right judgments to be made, right decisions to be made. And where this very practical challenge faces our Ugandan brothers and sisters with lockdown, but still the need for truck drivers, 
Help them, we pray, find a way to allow movement and control infection. In your mercy, would you grant it for us? Amen. Now, folks, some good news. I've got 15 pages of responses. Thank you of what God has been saying to you. You might change or see different post COVID. And we'll come to those in due course. I won't promise an exact day because it needs time for me to sift through it. But two things I want to talk about before we move into our wonderful interview today with Steve Jones. And the first is a small PDF. If you would like a copy of this PDF, it's called The Golden Opportunity. It's written by a friend of mine, Nigel Thompson, pastor of Assault and Light Church in Bury, here in the UK. And he'll be happy for you to get a copy of that PDF. If you just email me, davido at insight-marketing.com or go to davidoliverbooks.com, use the contact form, whatever's easier for you. And I'm going to read a little bit uh, from this, if I may. Now, Nigel was on a sabbatical, and so these sorts have been informed by a process already begun. He says this might be an unpopular opinion or even a controversial one, but here it is. I think, he says, that COVID-19, and more specifically, the lockdown, is a gift. There, I've said it. Are we still friends? A gift of time and space, a golden opportunity for most, if not all of us, if we wish to take it. If you know me quite well, you might be aware I've been on a sabbatical uh, for my two days working for church, well, for God, I hope, and his church, since Feb this year. I have myself been living in a slightly more restful, reflective, and reduced way. It has been wonderful. This COVID, to me, feels like some sort of Sabbath in so many ways. If you want to read more, you can see in Four Sabbath, which uh, I read to you by Billy Kennedy. On my sabbatical, Quit the Hustle is his title, I read The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer, and a quote struck with me on this theme. He quotes Carl Jung's words, Hurry is not of the devil, it is the devil. Carl Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, who founded analytical psychology. Strong words, you might think, but in the context of this great book, they make a lot of sense. If you get a chance, do read the book, he says. So often in hurriedness, we place doing above being. And I think this season that we're all in might now help us in being more than just our doing. A time for stillness for many of us. Now, just to make the point again, as I read from my friend Mike Fisher, not all of us, and you made that clear to me, some of you very clear in your responses, not all of you are resting or getting more time. For some of you, it's even more demanding, depending on your job, your responsibilities, and I get that. But probably, I don't know what the split will be, we might come up with a number, but let's say it's 80-20 or 60-40. For the majority watching, there is more time right now. And I just want to say to those of you for whom that is not the case, please don't get cross with us. We've got some stuff for you as well. And I get it. It can be a bit vexing when everybody else seems to have more time and you don't. But I want to pray for you now. In fact, Father, I'm thinking of people as I pray right now. People for whom uh, the demands are higher, not lesser, greater, not smaller. Father, in your mercy, would you help them find you in a new way in those responsibilities, those demands, and those areas of extra work. Now, here's what I want to ask you if you'd like to be engaged in. Nigel Thompson from Berry Church, Salt and Light here in the UK, has got an online survey and he's offering it to us. I've already completed it. It's really helpful and it's basically trying to get facts in the survey. I think it took me less than two minutes to complete, so it's a very simple online survey. If you would like to take part in that survey, would you just, at the end of today's broadcast, David O at insight-marketing.com, just literally put survey in the headline and I'll send your details to Nigel and he'll ping out the survey for you and you'll get a copy of the result at the end. And we will, towards the end of COVID, <laughs> whenever that is, God willing, we will have a couple of 
uh, last Faith and Corona video broadcast where we'll get uh, a combination of the data that Nigel's gathered, but also some of our key contributors, Mark Stibby, Steve Thomas, Dave Richards, Tony Gray, others who've really helped us during the interview phases. So if you'd like a copy of that survey to share in it, wherever you're from, whatever country you're in, just send me an email, David O at insight-marketing.com or go to davidoliverbooks.com, use the contact form to send in your requests, which brings us very nicely <laughs> to today's interview. I think you're going to love this. I'm going to introduce Steve Jones to you in a moment. Steve and Bev's wife are great friends of mine and Jill's. And uh, Steve's got a very interesting line of thinking in this interview. So let me uh, prepare you for it. It's based, as you'll see in a moment, around a letter that Steve discovered Martin Luther wrote to church leaders asking him about how they should respond to the plague, very similar to our pandemic. If you think point number three is rather short, it's because it was so disturbing, I couldn't actually leave it in as we originally recorded it. It's so strong. If you'd like to know more, you'll see during the interview, we're offering you a copy of Martin Luther's letter. So again, David Owen, insight-marketing, davidoliverbooks.com and request Martin Luther's letter and you can see point three for yourself. I just wasn't willing to put it on air because of its strength and potential to damage some. So let's go into that interview. Hope you enjoy it. Steve's going to pray us out with an apostolic prayer at the end. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And tomorrow, by the way, is the N NHS and International Care Workers Prayer Wall. I've had loads of you send in names. If you want a name added to that prayer wall and you haven't given it to me yet, you know what to do. Right, let's get into that interview, shall we? Well, it's great to welcome Steve Jones to the program today. Steve heads up the church in Oxford and is also responsible for one of the sort like regions uh, in Oxfordshire. Steve, thanks for joining us. I know from a previous conversation that you've been delving into Martin Luther and bubonic plague. That sounds quite <laughs> relevant. Tell us about yeah. that then. Well, fairly soon after the government Inc. started announcing the greater restrictions that showed how serious the current outbreak is. Um, like most people, I felt disorientated and thought, mm, I've never had a practical theology of pandemic or of infectious diseases, or well, what are the guiding principles? And uh, did what most people would do, started to look online and see if anyone's worked this out already. And the most helpful thing I found was something older, thinking of our ancestors who've lived through all kinds of plagues and something that Martin Luther, uh, in fact, had written when he was asked for advice about what you do when there's a plague. And give us some of the, uh, the nuggets you found or a glimpse into what you saw. Yeah, well, um, four things jumped out to me uh, from what he wrote. Uh, one is acknowledging that different Christians will respond in different ways. And really a nudge to us to be understanding of that difference, whatever level of confidence or fear different people are facing, not to expect everyone else to be in quite the same place as them. Some people will do really courageous things that others will see as foolish, and some will act in cautious ways that others will see as fearful, and to uh, be understanding of each other. I thought that was, that was that's helpful. It was brilliant. the first thing, so that's number first one thing that he four. said. Yeah. Second thing was um, to trust in God and that that trust in God allows us to express love to people, even in the face of, I mean, bubonic plagues are much greater danger than the one we're currently facing, even says, you know, you're not at liberty to self-isolate until you are sure that the people you care for are being adequately cared for. Your love overcomes your self-preservation if, if it needs to. And that demands a trust in God. So trust in God and express your love. And that's that, quite, that's that. quite challenging that. I, I suppose the difference between bubonic and COVID, I don't know, I'm asking, I guess, is that we've been urged by the government to self-isolate, not because of our own mm -hmm. danger, but because of the 
invisible danger we have when we carry it and pass it on to others. Did he deal with yeah. that? Yeah, well, he acknowledges the fact that um, in his era, there were just a few really well provided for towns that had a hospital. And he says, you know, if there's a hospital people can go to, then that may well cover your duty of care to people that you can get them to hospital. Um, so we're living in really different times. Then, in most places, the only care available was family members. Interesting. And so, so in that context, he says, you can't run away. So was his focus particularly, I'm really intrigued by this, was it particularly then our responsibility for our families was that the part of he, it he speaks about families he speaks about um people who have large households with servants in them and their obligation to their servants and the servants obligation to their 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 lords and ladies he speaks about pastors and the obligation that they have to their church community fascinating and then number three steve uh, well, he says that hygiene matters, and uh, they spoke in very frank terms. In, and I, I found that helpful because I'm really rubbish at everyday routine hygienic practices. So for me, that's really helpful because it gives me a strong nudge to say, no, wash your hands, pay attention to these things. Um, but they're just that hygiene matters. It's interesting to me that with this strong sense of you know, you can't just run away. You've got to care for people where you have a responsibility. He also says, and hygiene matters and you know, articulates that in really the strongest of terms that I can imagine. Right. <laughs> it's a wee bit strong. <laughs> yeah. Glad it's to a hear wee that. Bit strong. But I mean, the, the, the attitude of what it does get at is the attitude of heart. Yeah. Interesting. Which is what matters. Yeah. Found myself instantly reflecting on uh, the apparent cavalier attitude of some to social distance, isolation, mm. the request to stay at home. So it's quite sober and useful on, on, uh, on that plane. And number four, Steve, what was that? Is to recognise that an infectious disease spreading like this is a work of evil. And uh, people, he, he, he seems to hold back from saying, is it judgment from the Lord? Is it, you know, try, doesn't claim that it, he, he, rather, he rather pushes to say, hmm, be skeptical of people who say they've worked out what the point of it all is. But what he does say really clearly is that this is an evil at work and we should therefore be praying, I mean, working against it. But as it's, a, as it's a work of evil, we should be resisting it in the name of Jesus. We should be praying. We should be looking for God to intervene. Um, and we should be in you know, no doubt at all that this is something that God does not, uh, um, it's not, not part of God's kingdom. Fascinating. Um, Steve, I know on this uh, coming weekend as we record it, you've got a particular message in your church. Just tell us what the message is and what's behind it. Yeah. And also, if you would, <clears throat> tell our viewers something of the arrangement you already have in the city of Oxford for volunteers. Okay, so we quite quickly decided that in the three weeks up to Easter, we would make our three Sundays all about love, love in a pandemic, we call those three Sundays. The first Sunday, we talked about how we sustain community within the church. On Palm Sunday, we'll talk about how our love for God might be, uh, how it might grow in this time. And in the, this coming Sunday, we're going to, um, someone's going to speak about uh, our mission, our love for our neighbours in the time of a pandemic and what that's like. And already there's all kinds of initiatives, not only from the church, but all sorts of people are trying to, to show love to one another. And we're very much learning what might be the best things for us to do. Uh, we won't have a complete answer by this weekend, that's for sure. But what we will do is share our best understanding of what would be useful to do come this Sunday. And then we're committed to keeping the church informed in an ongoing way um, as to what seems to be best do and where we are in Oxford we're blessed by the fact that there's an existing organization called the Oxford Hub which has been around for some years and which pulls together offers of individual voluntary service with individual and specific needs it was set up by some students who saw there was a reservoir of goodwill amongst university students to do jobs for people to make the world a better place but 
didn't know what they could do and they um, already had the infrastructure. So some of our church members have already been in touch with the Oxford Hub. Actually, um, within a few days of the, the more severe restrictions coming in after the 16th of March, they had already been in touch, already got some training online from the Oxford Hub as to how to make cold contact phone calls to people who might be vulnerable. And we expect to continue directing people there as needs evolve. You mentioned an interesting thing to me, and it, it resonated for a number of reasons, but uh, you, you're not going to be offering your services as the Oxford Church is, plural, mm -hmm. uh, as distinctly Christian, if I understood it. No, that's right. I mean, um, the right motive for mission is love. Um, often, if I'm honest, I think, and speaking as a church leader, um, it's easy to be tempted into thinking of trying to do mission in such a way that whatever good comes from it, people know that it was us that did it on the idea that, you know, if attention comes to Christians, then maybe that helps attention be given to Christ. But there's, there's some murky waters there, aren't there, in terms yeah. of our motivations. Yeah. And the right motivation is, is to do things out of love and actually to have a season in which we can offer acts of service in a way that's not in any way branded as Christian is probably quite help, probably quite good for our hearts and our motives. Oh, I like it very much. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for that. I'm going to put you on the spot and get you to pray for us. And if you can, pray for us through the lens of those four ingredients of Martin Luther. Yeah. Over Happy to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that whilst we have been greatly surprised in the last few weeks that you know all things you know the end from the beginning thank you that uh, we have christian forebears who have discovered wisdom from heaven faced with actually even more challenging circumstances than the ones that we find ourselves in and we pray you'd help us to discover those ancient resources and we pray too that we would get wisdom from heaven as you speak to us through your word and by the power of your spirit, uh, so that we might know how to live in these times, how to discover more of your love for people and how to live out that love, uh, not only within the church, but to our neighbours. Lord, I pray that you would give us the grace to maintain all the hygienic practices that we should, and I pray that you'd give us the courage to do whatever other people need, even if sometimes that makes us feel a little bit uncertain ourselves. I pray in all of these things that love would prevail. I do pray that the evil of this pandemic would be brought to an end. Use whatever means you choose, Lord, whether that's our great hygienic practices or who knows but that a change in the weather or some other thing at your disposal would make a, a, a real change. Lord, we don't look to any specifics, but we look to you as the one who promises to be our strong tower, our great physician, and in all things, our saviour. Lord, we love you, and we trust you, and we, I pray for everyone who may see this video that the peace of Christ would settle in each one's heart, and I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Steve, uh, we're able to make that letter available. Uh, we'll put a link up on the website. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, we'll make sure that people can access that. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure.